I believe that it's going to be something that we need for this season. When we come to church, sometimes so what the pastor is sharing may not be exactly what you want to hear. But the Lord can also meet you by things. If you have yes, can you please raise up your hands? Okay, so I think many people from this side don't have yet. Can we can we pass the basket round? Amen. Church this morning with your Bibles, would you please open with me? 
As a lot here, we also like to read the opening scripture of the Bible, you know, while standing in reverence to the Almighty God. Open with me to the book of Genesis, chapter number 33, verses 12 to 15. The book of Genesis, chapter number 33, verses 12 to 15. Hallelujah. I can see so many holy faces worshiping with us for the very first time. I want to let you all know in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that no one is there by an accident. Before time began, the Lord had ordained that your first Sunday in the month of March 2020 was going to be spent at a lot of high Christian center. And it's my expectations that the Lord who has led you here would give you the reason, will let you know, understand fully why he has brought you here in the mighty name of Jesus. Genesis chapter number 33, verses 12 to 15. Well, Issa said, let's be going. Give me a second, sorry. Oh, yes, it is. So at Lofty Heights, we'll read the scripture responsive. What that means is that I'm going to take the first verse, you take the second verse, and the next verse will take us together, everybody, okay? So I'll go first. Well, Issa said, let's be going. I will lead the way. Next verse, church. Verse 14 says, Please, my Lord, go ahead of the servant. We will follow slowly at a pace that is comfortable for the livestock and the children, and I will meet you at here. Next verse, church. All Lord Almighty, we pray this morning in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that we breathe upon this word. That you are going to this tongue of clay. You cause you to speak a word in season to someone who is in your room this morning. Lord of the broken heart in the name of Jesus. You will cause this word to bring direction to the one who is confused. Clarity to the one who is lost in the name of Jesus. Light in the place of darkness in the name of Jesus. Comfort in the place of discomfort in the name of Jesus. I declare that according to your word, that my tongue is made like a pen of a ready writer in the name of Jesus. I speak a word in season to someone who is weary in this house this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray that because of the Lord says, You know how we do it if you're not worshiping here for the first time, you move around. Give somebody a high five here and celebrate you. Welcome to Lofty High. This is Lofty High. You find out you make it here. God bless you. Celebrate yourself. Move around, give somebody a high five. He's not celebrating from coming to somebody's dressing. Remember that the prophetic focus that the Lord gave us for the year 2020 is what? 
I yours for the nature of speed. Our year of supernatural speed. That was what the Lord told us that the year 2020 is going to be for us. So this month of March, as a church, we usually take our sermons in series. What that means is that we pick a focus as the Lord lays upon our heart, then Sundays and midweek services all through that particular month, we dwell on that such that we can immerse ourselves, you know, into what God is doing for time in our lives and in our church. So in this month of March 2020, our focus as a church is to expound on the subject supernatural speed. Amen. Amen. Supernatural speed, to expound on the subject supernatural speed. And this is going to be, this morning's session is going to be the very first session out of the numerous sessions that will take place under this series. And as Christ lives this morning, the Lord has asked me to bring to you a word, a message titled, The Power of His Presence. Someone say the power of his presence. The power of his presence. Can I have on the screen Exodus chapter number 33, verses 12 to 15? Exodus chapter number 33, verses 12 to 15. Hallelujah. Exodus 33, verses 12 to 15. The power of his presence. One day Moses said to the Lord, You have been telling me to take these people out to the promised land. But you haven't told me whom you will send with me. You have told me, and I know you by name, and I look favorably on you. Next verse. If it is true that you look favorably on me, that was Moses talking to God. If it is true that you look favorably on me, let me know your ways, so I may understand you more fully, and continue to enjoy your favor. And remember that this nation is your very own people. Verse 14 says, The Lord replied Moses and said unto him, Go with you. I will personally go with you. The Lord said to him, I will personally go with you, Moses, and I will give you rest. Everything will be fine for you. Then Moses said, If you don't personally go with me, or go with us, don't make us leave this place. Can I have the next one? Do you have the next verse after that? Then Moses said, if you don't personally go with me, how will anyone know that you look favorably on me, on me and on your people, if you don't go with us? For your presence among us sets your people and me apart from all the people on the earth. Yeah. The power of his presence. Moses understood how heavy the presence of the Lord is. Moses understood what it means, you know, to be able to walk hand in hand with the Lord. The reason why I could say to him, if you know your presence is not going to go with me, please don't let us leave this place. My message to you this morning again is titled, The Power of His Presence. At the start of the year, the Lord told us that this year will be our year of supernatural speed, and in this month of March, we'll be exploring that and how to position ourselves for it. In the book of Exodus, chapter number 33, that we just read, Moses emphatically told God, Tell me that your presence will be with me, that you will go with me. If not, do not lead me away from that particular spot. If you read the preceding chapter, in the preceding chapter of the same book of Exodus, that's chapter number 32, <coughs> the children of Israel actually began to mumble. They began to complain to Aaron while Moses was busy, you know, with the Lord. And they said to Moses, we need I mean, to Aaron, we need to leave this place where we are. So you need to be able to lead us to where we should be. And he said to them that they should bring the gold earrings, the gold, the jewels that they have. So he merged everything together. He, he, um, he, he, um, he melted them and used it. Bible says that when it came out, it came out in front of a gold cow. So they began to worship that and expecting that to be what will lead them to the promised land. As believers or as Christians, sometimes we preclaim our sense of judgment with what we think it should be instead of what it actually is. In other words, many at times, men who call themselves believers, they leave the substance they begin to chase, to chase after shadows. In this month of March 2020, the Lord is asking me to say to you that you should pursue his presence. He said unto Moses, 
He said, I will go with you personally. You know what? When God can tell you confidently, I'm not sending angels to you. I'm not sending any of the prophets to you. I personally will go with you. And when I go with you, you can be assured that you'll have rest. Amen. 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 So as a matter of fact, in chapter number 32, because the children of Israel could not wait for Moses again, because he went to meet with the Lord, they already concluded with Aaron that he should make them a God, a God that will go with them. So he made them the gold cow. This is still to tell you that in spite of their foolishness, because indeed they were foolish, that God who led you out of the captivity in the hands of Pharaoh, who has assured you that he was taking you into the promised land, that Moses, who was your leader, went to meet with the Lord, to talk to the Lord, for, to receive instruction from the Lord, and the lack of patience caused you to begin to mumble. It's amazing how quick humans, we human beings, are quick to forget the things God has done in our lives. We show our senses to the things that God has done in the past because of our over, over ambitious state. You are looking forward to certain things, particular things that you need God to do for you. But very quickly, you forget the times that you almost gave up on life. You forget so easily, you work right now. But you've forgotten so soon the times when you were hopping from one interview to another. When you wake up on the Monday morning and the news that will greet you will be, oh, we are sorry. Well, um, uh, yes, thank you for coming, but we've gone for with another candidate. Those ones, can even, those ones are even nice, right? What about those who did not reply after you went for an interview? How many of you were once like me? That you're going in for an interview, you felt as though you killed it. As a matter of fact, your salary, you've already begun calculating it mentally. As you're exiting the interview room, then they ghost on you. They go silent from you. You don't hear from them anymore. But now you have a job. So because you have a job now, you now have another need. You know the need? A car. So now God then blesses you with the car. Then another need then surfaces. You want a house. So when that which you desire to happen is not quickly forthcoming, you begin to murmur. You begin to crumble. I don't want to jump the gun, but let me just set this here right now. Don't seek after God's presence. Seek after his presence. Don't pursue presence, gifts from God. Seek his presence. There is a difference between the Lord giving you presence and giving you his presence. And in his presence, inside his presence, when he's with you, presence would come. The things that you so much desire would come. But Christian you know, must be made to become that kind of a religion and that kind of an environment where we've been trained, we've been groomed to just every time we come to church it's just to receive. Lord give me, Lord give me, Lord give me, Lord give me. When was the last time you said Lord Jesus? Not about my need. All my need is just you. When was the last time? When was the last time you prayed his presence? The psalmist says in Psalm chapter number 27, one thing have I desired of the Lord. He says, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may behold his temple and inquire from his temple, that I may behold his glory and inquire from his temple. When was the last time? When was the last time you chose not to make your life about you? Yes. You are in lofty heights. This is not a motivational center. The Spirit of the Lord is there. When was the last time you sought to create the presence? The psalmist says, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. When was the last time you woke up in the morning when you just gave your life to Jesus if you had? And just worship the name of the Lord. When you were just baptized afresh in the Holy Ghost. And you just you were just craving, craving that presence, that intimacy. You just wanted God of God. You were always quick to go to church. But now we have to be foreseen because we're in Canada. They would have to stay on you. I mean, for, for no for no good reason. They have to be staying on you to pick you up, to do this, to do that before you'll be able to come to church. I know that there are struggles in life. And I know that's why sometimes it's not fair. But I need, to, need you to know what? That God is better off. That God's grace is more sufficient. Sometimes, when somebody who is very dear to your heart 
they are doing stuff. Maybe a celebration, like she had a birthday on Friday. And we are telling brother Oswald and sister, she is out to celebrate her birthday. They appreciate more of your presence than the presence. That human being. I'm not communicating through this. Are, are, you, are you in God's presence this morning? They appreciate, sometimes you give them gifts. They say, oh, I'm sorry. I just want you to know that I cannot make it. They tell you, no, I don't want your gift. Though. I want you to be able to be, to, to, to be present. How many of you have felt that way before? For some people. Those of you who have been in love before, you know what I mean. Especially long distance relationships. Yes, this is lofty heart. What am I saying in essence? If you as human can feel that way, you desire the presence of the one that you love much more than the gift, much more than the presence that gives you, how much more the one who created you. The presence of the Lord I'm referring to this morning is not just ordinary presence of the Lord. Or maybe I should bring it down this way. There are three forms of presence of God that a man can, can enjoy. Number one is all my presence of God. What's the all my presence? All my presence of God is the God being everywhere, every time, anywhere. The Bible says in the book of Psalms chapter number 139, Psalms 139, it says, where can I flee from your presence? It says, if I go into the abyss, you are there. If I lock myself in my room, you are there. If I go into the dungeon, you are there. You, can, you are not hidden from anywhere. Yes, that's God's presence. Is only pre as I speak to you here right now, as I minister to you here right now, is the same God in Afghanistan, in Syria, in Sudan, in India, in the Philippines, all around the world at the same time. That's all my presence. But there is still yet another level of God's presence that surpasses His own presence. That is the indwelling of the Spirit of the Living God. Caravan That's the indwelling of the Spirit of the Living God. Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, verse 16, that you have become the temple of the Lord where his spirit resides. Apostle Paul, in, later on in the same book of Corinthians, was saying to them, Say, your body has become the temple of the Holy Ghost that must not be defiled. So, in other words, those of us who are New Testament believers, new generation believers, by new generation believers, I mean believers of the new covenant. The better covenant, the blood of Jesus, not the blood of calves, not the blood of goats or animals. We have that presence in us. Those of you who are in church on Sunday, we saw the raw manifestation of the same presence and demonstration of it. That's the indwelling presence of the Holy Ghost. Indwelling presence of the Holy Ghost. That's another level of, of presence. Another level of presence. But beyond that, there is yet another level of presence. It's called the manifest presence of the Lord. Somebody say manifest. Yes. The manifest presence of the Lord. That manifest presence of the Lord is actually my focus for this time. What is the manifest presence of the Lord? The unmistakable, the Shekinah glory, raw presence of God. The type that cannot be denied. This is not only present. You know what? The only presence is available for everybody, both the Jews and the Gentiles. The one who has even given his life to Jesus, as he can say God is everywhere. The indwelling presence is for those of you who are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, who have been baptized in the Holy Ghost. That's the indwelling presence. You cannot experience the manifest presence of God without the indwelling presence of God. When the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is activated, the result is for you to experience His manifest presence. Am I still in love to your heart? Yeah. Or am I going too deep or too fast? Three forms of presence. Holy presence. God everywhere at the same time. The indwelling presence. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter number 8, verse 11, it says, If the spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, it says, He who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit that is in you. Then I also talked about the indwelling, I mean, um, the manifest presence. There is a difference between saying God is everywhere and God is here. There is a difference. For those of us who are redeemed, God's desire is to cause us to experience his presence beyond the only presence. Even beyond the indwelling presence of God. 
He desires that we experience the manifest presence. When you step into a place and the forces of darkness in that environment knows that somebody has arrived. When you will be the one who will be moving around looking for someone who is afflicted, who is sick in their bodies and begin to pray for them. Asking them to recover in the name of Jesus. Manifest presence of God. Then we have the gift of the Holy Spirit, many of us. But many of you also think that the gift of the Spirit, the indwelling of the Spirit, stops as not being able to speak in other tongues. If what you do, if all that you do with the Holy Spirit that resides inside you is just to be able to speak in other, in other tongues, you don't have an idea yet what it means to experience the presence of God. In 1 John chapter number 4, give me that on the screen. 1 John chapter number 4, verse 4. 1 John chapter number 4, verse 4. The writer of the book of John says, You are not of like them, little children. He says, You are not like them. Beloved, do not believe that. 1 John 4, 4. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but that's the spirit, whether they are of good. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater. Greater is he that is in you. Come on now. Greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you. Great. You are not like them. Oh, Father, oh, oh, Jesus, help them this morning. When I say you are not like them, I'm saying that they may be experiencing losses all around them. You are not like them, my brother. Let me not be falling to them in pleasant places. I'm saying you are not like them. The word of the world says that greater is the one who is in you than that one which is in the world. You've overcome, you have overcome, you've overcome. Let me tell you, you know one beautiful thing about having the indwelling presence of the Holy Ghost? It means that you actually enjoy more than the presence of God. When you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, it means that you actually have more than the indwelling presence of God. You know what it means? It means that you actually have God inside you. Somebody God's presence. Did you catch that? It simply means that you carry God inside you. In other words, when you walk, you're not alone. When you wake up in the morning, you are sure that you're not alone. The question is this. How conscious are you of the one who lives inside you? So they say this song. Say, yeah, um, I'm depressed at the moment. And the Spirit of the Lord is in me. I'm just, I'm just not happy. I just don't want to see anybody. And the Spirit of the Lord is in you. One of the fruit of that Spirit is joy. Hallelujah. Unspeakable. Hallelujah. Full of glory. Grace and truth. Hallelujah. Amen. No down moment around you. You hear me? Did you hear me? No down moment around you. I need you to know. I need you all to know. If you don't take anything out of this sermon this, this morning, I need you to take this out. That you are not alone. Can you say to your neighbor, you're not alone? You are not alone. You are not alone. So stop, don't, even when you are walking, you know the beautiful thing is that nobody can see who is around you or what is around you. They can't see anything. They can't see anything around you. Please, can you come check this in, please? Amen. Amen. They can't see anything around you. They don't know exactly what you're going through. Bible tells us about the soul story of the son of the prophet. Who went to meet the master and said, See, they are coming to us, they are going to overpower us, they're going to overwhelm us. And say, No, say, leave them. Then he prayed, Lord, open his eyes. Then all of a sudden, the eyes pop open. And he saw, said, I saw chariots of horses. See, listen to me. Your life is not an accident, you are not a mistake. If you've never experienced Jesus before, when I'm done with the sermon and I'm making calls for people who want to give their life to Jesus, if you choose to come forward, Jesus is able to turn that messy situation you are in right now to turn it into a message for you. He's willing to take to take the debris, the rubbish. 
And the deposit in you that are not his is willing to make all use of all those things to cause them to work together for good for you. But I need you to know that you're not alone. Say it again that I'm not alone. I'm not alone. I'm not alone. That was why that confession said, I don't know how many of you were in church when, when the confession was read. That was why that confession said, said, I'm not alone. The Lord is with me. He's not just with me. Did you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. The Lord is not just with you. He's also in you. Yeah. He's for you. He's not against you. Don't let any demon cause you to believe that the Lord is against you. I've been to that level before where you begin to question your existence in life. So everybody gets it easy. Why should it remain? They go for interviews, they get the jobs. Why should it remain? My mates are married, they have their own children. Why should it remain? All the people that I came to Canada with, they already have their own homes. I don't have mine. Why should it be me? Why should it be you? Trust God through the process. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So, like I said, the manifest presence of God is provoked when the indwelling presence is activated. You know, one, one of the greatest tragedies, tragedies that I personally believe, I personally believe, can befall any man on the face of the earth. Is for him or her not to be conscious of his or her identity. You don't know who you are. You don't know whose you are. You don't know why you've been created. You are also now not even conscious of the spirit and the one who lives inside you. How do you then make exploits? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak over someone's destiny this morning. I declare that in this month of March, your struggles are over. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I declare that that pain is over. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I declare that that hustling strength is over. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let the Lord's hand let it lift you up. Amen. Beyond your imagination. Amen. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we saw that actually happen in the life of Jacob. In Genesis chapter number 28. Give me Genesis chapter number 28, verse 16. Jacob was in a place God met with him, but he did not know. That is the way many believers live their lives. So the devil actually understands the weight of the power that you carry much more than you who is the carrier of the power. Listen to me. Why should you be afraid to sleep at night? Why? Why should you have a dream huh? that you're eating in the dream or something and you think or you take it on that your village people they visit instead of in Regina? Why? What's the spirit of fear doing in you? The Lord has not given you the spirit of bondage again to fear. He's given you the spirit of love and power. The spirit of adoption by which you cry out, Abba Father. The spirit that resides in you, the God that is in you, is not the one who is fearful. Is the one that is that people fear. He's not fearful about anything. There is no fear in him. There is no fear in him. Why should it be you? I move around, see people, you know, come around and you know, and all of all those stuff, ask me questions, ask me this, ask me that, and I see people. Sometimes I'm praying and I see glory. You know, full up in the life of someone. Yet the life does not measure up to what exactly God is showing you. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. See, again, I'm saying it. You are not alone. At no point in your life huh, have you ever been alone. If the only presence of God is not there, I mean, if the indwelling presence of God is not there, the only presence of God will be there. If the only presence of God is there, if the indwelling presence of God is there, you can then trust him for his manifest presence. Look at Jacob. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. What tragedy? By the time Jacob came to his senses, the Bible says, says that he picked up stones, the same stones that he used as pillow. Then he used it, he told God, say, if you would lead me, again, talking about the presence of God, if you would lead me, if you would lead me on to the next level, I will come back to this place and sacrifice to you. 
Bible says he calls that place Bethel, where God is. Bethel, where God is. Why are we not sometimes not conscious of the presence of God around us? Because many of the things that a lot of us do, we do them on our own strength. We ask our brains instead of our spirits. Because it seems good, we go ahead and we do it. Because it's the thing involved, we go ahead and we do it. Oh yeah, everybody is doing nursing, I want to do nursing. Oh, they are not doing nursing again, they want to do accounting, I want to do accounting. Have you taken your time to seek the Lord's face? Proverbs chapter number 3 verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Bible says in all of your ways, acknowledge him. When you do, what will happen to you? He will direct your path. His presence. His presence. Moses understood the danger. Many of us, we go to places where God did not send us. Yes. And you know the worst part? You are in places where God hasn't sent you to, and you are still not conscious that God hasn't sent you there. That's double jeopardy. Because we went ahead simply because it looked good. You want to relocate, you've not talked to God about it. Lord Jesus, and this is not about me. Because in actual fact, none of you all here, including me, none of us own our lives. Why do we treat it as though it is ours? Say, oh, I'm relocating to Toronto. Why are you going to Toronto? My friend is there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? See, when the why, in the reason why you do the things you do, excludes God, the result is usually not palatable. In other words, when you take God away from the equation, of the things that you do, the result is not usually palatable. I'm saying, where the presence of the Lord is, there is rest. Beyond anything, this month of March, this month of March, number one, realize that there is, you just don't have the Spirit of God. You carry God on your inside. Number two, be assured that it's ever around you. In you, with you, and around you, and you're never alone. But more importantly, I want you to, as you journey through this month of March, seek the Lord's presence. Lord, not me this time around, but you. Just worship. Just worship. Just a desire to just know you more. Bible says to us in the book of Daniel, chapter number 11, verse 32, he says, They that to me do know they are God. Bible says, They shall be strong. Then they shall do exploits. I need you to check the sequence. They that do not, they are God. So, in other words, to do exploits, they must first know they are God. So, when they know they are God, then the Lord, they are God, the Lord, they are God, makes them strong. And because they are strong, what happens? The result is exploits. When you know the God that you serve, you would know that at times you are never alone. It's the reason why someone like me can look at the devil in the face. I say, who born you? I fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. How much conscious are you of the presence of the Lord around you? Do you know you're not ordinary? Do you know you're not ordinary? Do you know that? How much conscious? You know, when you go, I, I told you all here, those who watch here, I told you repeatedly. Each time I'm stepping into my office in the morning, I take it like Jesus is entering this place. Oh, glory to the Lord. Each time I'm stepping into my office, God is going in there. It is the same thing with each and every one of you. That's the reason why I have to work. Sometimes I may be stuck on a project and I'll go, Holy Spirit, at this point I don't even know what to do. What would you have me do? I remember a task given to me some time ago last I shared a testimony. And it was near due date, maybe two days to due date. I hadn't begun. And all the holes were high. Why didn't I begin? I didn't begin simply because I didn't know how to start. Few days to the deadline. Then I was in the office. And the Lord said, I want to speak to you. You know the beautiful thing about the presence of the Lord? He can speak to you anywhere, at any time. You can be in the loo, 
He can speak to you. I told those of you who were in church on Sunday, who experienced the manifest presence of the Lord by the infilling of the Holy Spirit, that the Lord begins to speak to you. He can speak to you anywhere. So on my desk, I go, Lord Jesus, so what would you have me do? Holy Spirit, I don't even know how where to begin from. And I heard the Lord say to me, okay, so open your file now. Then go on Google. Then search for this one. That will give you a cue as what to do. And I did exactly. And by the time I submitted the following day, my manager said, hey, this is it, thank you, this is it, this is it, this is it, this is it, thank you, thank you for always making me proud. Then my mind, uh, <laughs> if only you know. <laughs> because it was not by my power. It was not, see, I can never be lost. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I can never be lost. I can never be lost. I can never, I can never be without direction. I can never be without direction because greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. I can never be without direction simply because the world who is in me tells me for time what they will have me do. The Lord picked up Elijah or the Elisha, told him to go to the tree by the terrible tree. He says, I've commanded a raven to feed you there. The presence of the Lord. Raven is a very stingy animal, creature. So for those of us who are new creation new believers or New Testament believers, we carry much more than the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. We carry God himself. I perceive maybe this is the reason why God has led you to lofty heights this day. To just let you know that he's willing to hold you by the arm. Alright? And fight that battle for you. Bible says that he has you in his heart on the palms of his hands. See, listen to me very carefully. He has never forgotten you once. You cry to bed. You wake up in the morning, nothing to do. Not because you don't want to do something, because there is actually nothing to do, nowhere to go. He sees everything. That songwriter says, he sees each tear that falls. And he hears me when I call. If you will be conscious, more conscious of his presence in you, within you and around you, you will see his hand. In the things that is going on in your life. May the Lord be somebody a testimony in the name of Jesus. Yes. Bible tells us in the book of Mark, chapter number 16, verse 20, that the Lord began to you know throw the disciples about. Bible says he was confirming his words, that words with signs following the presence of God. He was confirming everything they were doing. He was confirming those things with signs following. Because see, don't crave the presence. I said this before, I'm saying it again. Okay, take a pause. Because I know that it may be too hard for some people to do. When you ask some people to pray for others and not pray for themselves, they see it as a selfish desire. But that's actually what God desires you to do. To intercede on behalf of others. I'm saying that for this month of March, for this month of March, can you please stop seeking the Lord's presence and seek His presence? And said to him, Father, yes, I need a job. But for now, from what the pastor shared in church on Sunday, I'm casting that aside. Can you please reveal yourself for your presence to me? Can you cause me to experience this manifest presence of yours? Yes, I need this. Yes, I do this. Yes, I do that. But Lord Jesus, can you please open my eyes to see the depth and the weight of your love for me? Can you let me know how much beloved I am to you? This month of March, if you would obey this instruction, you will not end this month without your testimony. Amen. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So when you have the presence of the Lord around you, the manifest presence, what does it do to you? Protection. <coughs> Excuse me. Protection. Psalm chapter number 91 says, he says, they that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. The protection of the Lord, that's how you can go. I read it. So when they would, I would say that any flight that he enters, because he knows that he's in that flight, that flight is not permitted to crash. It's not permitted to crash. When some believers, those who've understood 
who's they are and who they are, the identities in Christ Jesus, when they speak, some of you will think they're just making mouth. No, no, it's a reality. And it first comes from you reconditioning your mind to letting you know that God is not angry with you, to letting you know that God is not mad at you, to letting you know that you're not worthless in God's sight, to letting you know that God is and chase after you alone. Is protection. What else do you find? You find rest. Psalm chapter number 23. Many of us will know that. The Lord is my shepherd. You know what a shepherd does? A shepherd leads his sheep. That's the presence of God. The presence of God. Shepherd leads his sheep. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You know what I shall not want means? I shall not want means that I will lack no good thing. Meaning, nothing missing, nothing broken, my life. Me. The Lord is my shepherd, I said, no, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Go ahead. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Let me let you know. Even if it's just for the sake of the name of the Lord, the Lord is willing to stake his name for your miracle. Lord oh, Jesus, help them. Just such that you will not be put to shame. I cannot call upon your name and end up in shame. No way. No way. I cannot bow before you and bow before my no way. No way. Why? Because you are my God. Karama Surya Katali. I perceive the spirit of prophecy upon me. Oh, shut her, leave her hand on the water. See, for the sake of his name, listen to me, for the sake of his name, uh, just not for you, because you've been calling on that name and people know that you've been calling him, he's willing to stake his name for your miracle. Did you hear me? You cannot call upon the name of the Lord and end up in shame. Don't you get it? Don't you get it? It doesn't matter how long you've been waiting for that miracle to happen. You cannot be calling upon the name of the Lord and end up in shame. Bible says, the psalmist says in Psalms chapter 119, he says, show me your salvation as your will is, as your desire is towards those who love your name. You cannot be calling upon the name of the Lord and end up in shame. It is not possible. Am I saying everything would always be smooth? That's not exactly what I'm talking about. I'm saying that in the midst of the trials of life, in the midst of the vicissitudes of life, in the midst of the casting down, in the midst of the heartbreaks, in the midst of the loss of job, in the midst of loss of status in Canada, the Lord is still right there with you. If you hold on to him, the Lord, as a strength, just a strength, I'm not even talking about a pillar, holding on, clinging on to something this way and saying, Lord, I'm not going to let you go. You will see his hands in it. If you commit that situation into his hands, you will see his hand in the situation. Stop struggling on your own. The Lord loves you too much. He loves you too deeply. Stop thinking your certification will get you the promotion or the job that you desire. Stop thinking that your beautiful face is sufficient to get you maritally fulfilled. Stop thinking. Stop thinking, I don't want to digress, but that is the reason why some of you were ladies. It's the wrong guys that come your way. Because when you take a look at yourself in the mirror, you don't see God's creation. You see your beauty. You see your miracle. You see your, uh, your, your uh, what, what is it called? Your Brazilian hair, your Peruvian hair. That's all that you see. You see your high heels. Can you be a slayer in the spirit on the heels? Yeah. That you appear in church in your heels and you begin to cast out demons. Hallelujah. Because greater is he that is in you. Come on now. Come on now. Rest. It guides me, it leads me by the steep waters. Rest. When we were coming to Canada about three, over three years ago, only one word I have from the Lord. Please bring it down a little bit. Only one word I have from the Lord. You know what that word is? Rest in my will for your life. 
Ah, oh, shut up. Oh, Lord Jesus, help them. See, listen to me. I cannot be troubled. Sister Jay, when she was sharing her testimony, she said most of the battles that you were fighting were battle of the mind. As a matter of fact, after sermon on Sunday, she sent me a personal message telling me, thanking God for my life and for allowing God to use me again to minister on Sunday. I was just here doing my things. I didn't know how much those things were breaking into the spirit, soul and bodies of some of you. I saw people at the back weeping. I did not, nobody flogged anybody. I saw people standing at the back weeping. People here leading worship, weeping, crying. Come on now. You can't do all of all these things and end up in shame when your mind is changed and you know indeed that the Lord is with you. He is in you. He is around you. He is for you. He is not against you. The things that you dare will change. Rest. Rest. Many of you are too troubled. Me, when I sleep at night, I snore. There is no demon who will cause me not to sleep. <laughs> oh, and you are eating in your dreams. You want to kill yourself. Ah, this, look at my tummy. Come on. <laughs> I've eaten all sorts. I'm still here. <laughs> it is not what goes into a man that defies a man. Some time ago, you know, I saw, I think I was in Bangkok in Nigeria, and I saw myself as what we call a booker, point and kill. For those of you who are not from Africa like I am, it's like cafeteria. I'm sorry, you don't have that time around here. You know, I got in there and I sat down and I carried plates. You know those places where they sell local amala and all of all those and you be the one you carry your plate you go there say okay give me this one give me that one give me this one give me that one and i carried my plate and i went there and said this is the one i want that is the one i want in dream i dipped my hand into my pocket yeah i gave them money they gave me change and i bought soft drink on top of it <laughs> and i sat down and i ate so at the point and i woke up if it were the me of those days the me who does not know the one who lives in me, how would I be teaching? <laughs> See, they're giving me food to eat. <laughs> yeah, Jesus, it is sickness. It is poison. It is the village people. They don't want them. <laughs> See, when your mind is changed, and you know that you are not alone, yes. people of God, it changes things around you. Yes. As those of the world, those who go to a court, you know, to get power, as they rely on their court power, much more you have power than what they have. When they go to an herbalist house or a, a just place or a fetish place and they give them a substance, my brother, you know what they do? They rely on that substance with the whole of their life. When they're giving you powder to rub on your face, that bubbles will come. You will not be to begin to cut your <laughs> that boy is going to come your way. Your confidence is in the powder. What am I saying in essence? What I'm saying is the one that is in you is way much more. Oh, yeah. Let's begin to bring the service to a close now. So we can have some meals and fellowship after the service. Hallelujah. Amen. What do you find in the presence of God? Provision. I have never lacked any good thing in my life. You see, this is not to boast. For those of you who don't worship here, the past would not have heard it before. But those who worship here, they, I tell them, they know it. Since the year 2009, there is no day that I wear anything that there will be not at least one thing on me that I did not buy with money. The presence of God. You don't understand that, right? The presence of God causes you. Hmm? You know, I talked about presence and presence the other time. When you heal yourself in the presence of God, things that you be struggling to use money to go and buy, they become present for you. Part time. I haven't dressed this way in a long while. Brother Sam saw me in church this morning. Say, Pastor, I haven't seen you like this since 2018 or whatever. Say, yeah. Every this jacket is David Wedge. I didn't buy it. This shoe is David Wedge. I go home every January, he clothes me from head to toe. Provisions because of his presence. Every time 
every time, every time I just, anytime you see me, I wanted to do money, there is something on me that I did not buy with my money since 2009. When I'm casually dressed, I'm putting on something that I did not buy with my money. Many of you still pursuing the present. You've forsaken. See, I discovered Matthew chapter number 63 long ago, around that same 2009, when I went to Wolfby, World of Faith Bible Institute, by Bishop David Oedipo. My psyche changed. My thinking changed. I knew that I shouldn't be pursuing this some of all these things that people are pursuing. Just one thing became my focus. The Lord Jesus Christ and the advancement of his kingdom. It began to supply needs. But don't be fooled. I give much more some of the things that I have out. What am I saying? His presence commands provisions. Some of you see struggle with your money. You belong to a local assembly type. They want to eat our money. 10% to 10%. And what you're doing, maybe you're earning the, like $15 or $14 per hour. Give offering. No. See, the Lord does not need anybody's money. If you understand the way financial prosperity works in the kingdom, you would know each time you find yourself in God's presence. Or each time you have the opportunity, anytime you dip your hands into your pocket and you let something out, you will know that it should be for joy. Bible says that he who gives to the poor, Bible says he lends to the Lord and the Lord will repay him. I'm not talking about just church. I'm talking also about just giving people gifts. Just giving people gifts. The reason why so many of you, you struggle for some of the things that you have. You struggle to buy this, you struggle to buy, and people don't give you things simply because you, you don't give out. You don't give out. You don't give out. His presence has speed. His presence comes with, with speed. In 1 Kings chapter number 18, which is the focus scripture for this um, supernatural speed series, specifically verse 46, the Bible says that the end of the Lord came upon Elijah. The hand of the Lord came upon him. That's the presence of the Lord. That's the presence of the Lord. And that was the reason why I was able to do the things that he did. Whatsoever thing God did through him and for him, God is willing to do much more for him. I want to charge us this morning. Please seek God's faith on matters before you go ahead. In 1 Samuel chapter number 30, verse 7 and 8, the reason why David has a very solid report about his work with God was simply because, Mr. J, David never embarked on any journey, any battle, without first seeking God's presence. Shall, should I go? Will I overcome? Will I overtake? Will I be possessed? Part time, all through David's life, no wonder the Lord described him as the man after his own heart. When you begin to seek his presence, you become the person after his heart. And it begins to reveal more of himself unto you. Amen. Amen. So to experience supernatural speed, you must be conscious of the God in you and provoke his manifest power. You must be willing to provoke his manifest power. The indwelling power of the Lord is good. The omnipresent power of the Lord is good. But seek the manifest presence. In this church, we have an audio Bible. Those who've been worshiping here for a while should have it on the phone. It's a Bible, an audio Bible, not your regular Bible app. This is an audio Bible app. It reads the Bible, I mean, in a cinematic format. So you will think as if you are watching, it will be playing as though you are watching a movie. It will be playing as though you are watching a movie. So you can have that playing somewhere and keep continuing in the kitchen, doing some other things that you want to do. Amen. Amen. This month, I want you to be more aware of what you carry. You carry something. You carry someone on the inside of you. The world may not see it physically, but you must know that there is someone in you that you are not ordinary. Please, can you say it again? I'm not ordinary. Come on, say it like you mean it. I am not ordinary. I am not ordinary. That you are not ordinary. It may not end well for them, but it will end well for you. They may be suffering defeat. You will never suffer anything. In the name of Jesus. They may be experiencing loss. You are only permitted to hear about it. You will not experience it. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So desire more than just the indwelling presence of the Lord. Desire is manifest presence. When the indwelling presence of the Lord, when you become conscious of it, and you activate it, you begin to experience his manifest presence. 
I'm not sure how many of you know, those of you who speak, Lord, the who are gifted in the Holy Ghost, that when you indeed, you know, yield your spirit to the Lord and you lift up your hands in worship and you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, you would have to force yourself to stop. You would have to force yourself to stop. You would have to force yourself to stop. This month is our month of His presence. And as a church, we are positioning ourselves to attract and provoke His manifest presence. On Wednesday, our midweek service recharge starts 7 p.m. in this same room, and we'll be continuing with this series. And I will share with you from the scripture how to cultivate the presence of the Lord. Some of you desire to, but you don't know how to. If you want to know how to, join me in church on Wednesday and see what God is going to do in your life. Let's rise up on our feet this morning. The presence of the Lord. Can you just lift up your hands and just say, Lord Jesus, this month of marriage, I desire your presence. Not your presence. I desire your presence, Lord. Not your presence. Help me, Lord, to dwell in this presence. Help me, Lord, to experience it. Can you turn that to prayer? Talk to the Lord about it. This month of marriage caused me to experience your manifest presence. Let me be conscious that I'm not alone. Talk to God. Let me be conscious that I'm not alone. Lord Jesus, let me know that you're not against me. Lord Jesus, cause me to know that you're not just for me. You're also in me. You are with me. You are around me. You are not against me. Help me, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. At Lofty Heights, we don't like bringing the service to close without giving someone an opportunity to have a relationship with Jesus. All eyes closed and all eyes bow. You're under the sound of my voice this morning. You don't have a relationship with the Lord. Or you've gone too far away from his presence. You know that if Jesus comes today, you're not likely to make heaven. Without shaming, you can please just sit the fire by the raising up of your hands. And just say these prayers after me. Lord Jesus, today, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Please come into my life. Please make me whole. Make my life yours totally. In Jesus' name. Father, we give you thanks this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word that has done for us this morning. If not anything, we know now that you're always for us. We know that you're not against us. We know that you're not just in us, you're also around us. We know that you're, not, you're also with us. Lord, we crave your presence this month. Let's experience it, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone who has returned to you in this hall this morning, including those watching on YouTube and other platforms, let your grace that has kept, that has kept them, let your grace remain with them. In the mighty name of Jesus. The same grace that has caused them to release the all unto you. Let the same grace keep them. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Celebrate Jesus this morning. Amen. Amen. If you receive that word, I take off this morning. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Come and celebrate Jesus. Amen. Very quickly, can we have our seat in God's presence? Let's have our seat, please. I'll just run through one or two announcements.